Um, hi everyone, we're here with Marcus and Jonas from oneio.com. Uh, can you briefly introduce yourselves and tell us what is it that you do? Hey Robot, nice to meet you. Basically what we're building is a decentralized version of WeChat. So uh, if you're familiar with WeChat, that's a Chinese messenger with built-in uh, basically apps or little applications. And uh, we're building a solution which uh, brings that essentially to the Web3, which means uh, you have basically a basic messenger, but on the other hand, you can enrich it with functionality services. You can interact with other groups of people and services and have a very secure place to create digital value. Okay, um, this, this is a very interesting use case of, of blockchain technology uh, in, in messaging system, but um, I have a technical question on, on, on the level of how, because messaging is generally considered to be very data heavy, uh, and, and blockchain infrastructure um, tends to, to utilize small bits of data on, uh, usually, uh, so how do, you, how do you manage these data transfers on, on blockchain and what kind of data is actually transferred to blockchain to, uh, to keep it reasonable? So when you look at it from an infrastructure point of view, um, we do not use centralized servers. So the entire network runs on end users' devices and everyone has a mobile and maybe a smart TV and some, some, some other devices at home. And we leverage this infrastructure to run um, uh, uh, the system. So within the blockchain, we just store reference. So the blockchain is for encryption, identity, and basically reference. The uh, data itself, uh, we store in a distributed file system, which again can be provided by, uh, by the people using the ecosystem. And uh, also in terms of how the blockchain works, so every interaction between people or a group of people or people and machines, um, you could compare it maybe to a WhatsApp uh, chat, um, is represented by its own blockchain. So for example, if you work with a number of people, you know, for example, you organize a party, um, then you run your own blockchain on your own devices and you do not need uh, a layer one blockchain in order to confirm like uh, that the both of us ha had a chat in here because the other party is, or the other person is a trusted person in this case. So in this case, the entire concept is indefinitely scalable and the layer one blockchain you only need if you deal between untrusted parties. So for example, if you have a service which you want to plug in into your conversation, let's say a delivery service, um, that's someone external, um, which again is represented as its own um, um, co, we call it a co, uh, which consists of the, uh, the guy which prepares the food and the delivery service and um, that can be encapsulated and attached to basically to, to, to your chat. And, but then you have uh, interaction between two different parties. So your party group and the delivery service, and that's handled through the top blockchain, um, which comes also with a transaction fee, obviously. And since it's governed by a DAO, um, part of the transaction fees lands in a treasury, which then can be used by the people again in order to promote new features and further development of, of the entire ecosystem. Um, from a technology, technological standpoint, uh, we use a Substrat. Um, that's the uh, blockchain used by Polkadot, for example, because it allows, um, with the concept of the parachains and so on, the scalability which we need. Okay, so um, uh, that, that sounds like a very interesting uh, way to solve the trust problem in a, in a messaging system. Um, I'm curious because you've, you've mentioned that each device is practically uh, its own uh, blockchain in, in, in this solution. Um, how do you solve speed, uh, the, the, the speed problem in this, in this, in this case? Because um, the fame, uh, blockchain transactions tend to have a little bit of delay that could uh, range from you know, a, a little bit or up to a few seconds and uh, messaging systems are uh, they have the need to be instant. So how would you? How is uh, your solution solving that that speed issue? So for this one co back to the party, um, we use our own uh, consensus mechanism, which is an on on demand mechanism, which means a block is generated when a message is being produced. In this case, 
And since we're not talking about a super large scale uh, blockchain, which needs to validate a transaction uh, thousands of times, which is not the case in the small group, um, we can do it on demand. And this makes it undefinitely scalable and uh, super fast, instant. Awesome. So um, uh, I guess my, my next question would be, how do you communicate all of that value to, to users? Because I'm assuming uh, there's a lot of technical superiority under the hood, but um, at the end of the day, uh, how do you want users to perceive your, your, your platform? Well, uh, thanks for the question, because one of the main things we do on a communicational side is trying to make clear what Web3 is all about. Uh, Web3, in our opinion, is still a, pay, a space pretty complicated to understand, but we also understand that there are many, many great solutions out there. I mean, uh, take a look at this uh, event here. There are so many great people here with many great vision and ideas, and um, the main problem is interoperability. So um, to uh, communicate to the average user what they get from using Web3 solutions, they first need to understand why they shouldn't use Web2 solutions anymore. And um, one very important point here, uh, we think that data ownership is a human right. And uh, if you take a look at the current situation in Web2 right now, um, data ownership is very questionable here. So you don't really know what's happening with your data. And we think that the users producing the valuable data should be entitled to do with it whatever they want to and to understand what it means to rule over your own data. That's a big field. Just an example for uh, yesterday it happened uh, that there was a leak in iCloud. Oh, yeah. So um, random people photos appear on random people iPhones. So uh, that's ob obviously a problem of Web2 because people don't own their data. It's the data is more or less owned by Apple in this case, and uh, they control it. And uh, uh, and back on, on, on their back end produces those issues. Yeah. Were those pictures encrypted, secure in a way that only the people who produce the pictures could access it, would have avoided this um, this, this problem. But well, that that happens in in, in Web two, and you see it all along with uh, different tools from OneDrive to. Dropbox to you name it. If I may add on that, we need to do two things. We need to create applications and uh, interfaces that need to be simple and easy to use so that everybody can use it, but we also need to communicate why you should use it. That's the two main things we need to work on very hard. I, I fully agree. And uh, before our interview, you mentioned a very interesting um, case of, of educating uh, your users through an unusual uh, way. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah. So uh, I'm not from a technological background. I'm an author, actually. I tell stories all the time. So um, I've written two books already. And uh, when I met this guy, I thought, wow, he introduced me to Web3 and blockchain and uh, all these great stories. And I think, um, you could write a whole book about that, and you could write a story why Web2 is uh, really fucked up at the moment, if I may say it like that, because it's really uh, a pretty heavy situation out there. So, um, as part of our communication strategy and um, for educating purposes, I've written a thriller, it's a, non, uh, it's a fiction book, um, in which you um, find the, uh, in which the reader um, learns about what it means if your data falls into the wrong hands and what you can actually do and what is done right now with your data because it's happening already. And um, slowly but surely you start to understand the concept of Web3 and why all these great projects are here and uh, why the visions are so empowering. And uh, so um, I hope uh, we're in the process of publishing it right now. Um, I hope we uh, can make it accessible to everyone in the summer of 2023. Awesome. I think that's a great initiative to, to educate users on, on the differences and, and the mission that we, that we actually all have here. All right. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Rob. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you.